This video features a brief talk on the history of the 6th century CE wars of the Byzantine Empire, especially those involving Emperor Justinian and General Belisarius. While the Western Empire floundered towards disintegration, the Eastern Empire prospered in spite of repeated destruction in the Balkans. Since the eastern frontier was quiet and the rich provinces of Asia Minor, Syria, and Egypt generated surpluses. Eastern rulers attempted to help the West, especially in the struggle against the Vandals, whose maritime raiding threatened to affect the eastern Mediterranean, but to no avail. Conflict resumed with Persia in 502, when King Kavad invaded Armenia, capturing various fortresses, and finally, after a fierce siege, Amida. The origins of the outbreak lay much further east in Persian dealings with the Hephthalites of Central Asia, who had helped Kavad regain his throne. They were now demanding subsidies, and Kavad asked the Romans for financial help. But the Eastern Emperor Anastasius refused, perhaps reviving the issue of Persian control of Nisibis, or perhaps just reluctant to build up Persian strength. The Roman response was slow, since Bulgar Huns were ravaging the Balkans in 502, but the position slowly stabilized. In spite of dissension between Roman commanders, by 505, Kavad was distracted by another Hephthalite invasion and agreed a truce for seven years. Anastasius interrogated his generals about their problems, and the lack of a secure base near the frontier was identified as a key. Therefore, a site was chosen at Dara, and construction of a massive new fortress was undertaken. Financial responsibility was entrusted to Bishop Thomas of Amida. By 507, he had raised the walls to a sufficient height to disregard Persian protests that the Romans had breached the agreement to ban new frontier fortifications. In spite of the tension, the truce persisted for a further 20 years. Although competition between the two superpowers of the ancient world continued on the fringes of their spheres of influence in Sub-Caucasia and Arabia, where religious factors exacerbated tensions. But the occasion for renewed conflict in 527 came from an incident which reflected the continuing strength of the 5th century traditions of peaceful cooperation. The elderly Kavad asked Emperor Justin to adopt his son Kusro and so guarantee his succession. In a mirror image of Arcadius's appeal to Yazdgard over a century before, Justin was persuaded that full adoption might compromise the Roman succession and so offered Kusro a lesser form of adoption. The war began badly for the Romans, with reverses in Armenia and Upper Mesopotamia. But Justinian, who succeeded his uncle in autumn of 527, reorganized eastern defenses by creating a new military command for Armenia 
initiating major defensive works at key sites, and appointed a new general for the Eastern Command, Belisarius. Procopius, the main historian for Justinian's wars, joined Belisarius's staff. In 530, the Persians were defeated in Armenia, and Belisarius overcame the Persian army outside his base of Dara. But these victories were offset in 531, when Belisarius was defeated at Callinicum on the Euphrates. Justinian's main concern throughout had been to stabilize the situation on the eastern frontier, and negotiations were now pursued to achieve the endless peace to which the new Persian king Khusro agreed in 532. Justinian paid 11,000 pounds of gold and agreed to withdraw the Roman commander and his troops from Dara. From the start of his uncle's reign in 518, Justinian had been interested in Western affairs and had rapidly rebuilt links between the Eastern Church and the Pope at Rome. This caused strain in Ostrogothic Italy, where the Goths, in spite of their heretical status, had sustained good relations with the papacy because of tensions between Rome and Constantinople. The death of Theoderic the Amal in 526 and the struggle of his daughter Amalaswintha to retain the throne for her son Athalaric upset the international balances which had developed in the West during the previous generation. Peace with Persia provided Justinian with the opportunity to advance his grand idea. The Vandals came first. They were the more obnoxious to Eastern Christians because some mutilated refugees from their intermittent persecutions had reached Constantinople. There had been two Eastern expeditions against them during the 5th century, and the prospects for diplomacy were better in Ostrogothic Italy. In 533, an expedition sailed in 500 transports, escorted by 92 warships and comprised 15,000 Roman soldiers, 1,000 foreign allies, and Belisarius's retainers, his Bucellarii. The Vandal king, Gelimer, was distracted by rebellion on Sardinia, whereas Belisarius received help with supplies from the Ostrogoths in Sicily, and the Romans landed without encountering the Vandal fleet. Belisarius advanced on Carthage, defeated a scratch army raised by Gelimer, and captured the city. Later that year, when their troops had returned from Sardinia, the Vandals attempted to recapture Carthage, but they were heavily defeated just outside the walls. Justinian reorganized the province, restoring urban fortifications which the Vandals had slighted, reconstituted frontier defenses, and returned property to the Catholic Church. Belisarius sailed to Constantinople with several thousand Vandal captives, who were enrolled in the Eastern armies and was permitted to celebrate a triumph, the first non-imperial triumph for over 500 years. An opportunity now presented itself in Italy, where Athalaric had died, and Amalaswintha, imprisoned 
by her cousin Theoda had was killed. Justinian protested and sent expeditions to Dalmatia and Sicily. Negotiations with Theoda had about accepting Roman sovereignty broke down, and Belisarius was ordered to invade Italy, even though he had been sent to Sicily with only 7,000 Roman soldiers, 500 allies, and his Bucellarii. He captured Naples by siege, although some inhabitants supported the Goths, and then marched into Rome, from which the garrison had withdrawn. Theodahad had now been replaced by Vitigis, who moved to besiege Rome in February of 537. In spite of shortages of troops and supplies, Belisarius defended the massive circuit and gradually harried the besiegers so that they were suffering as much as the defenders when the siege was ended in winter of 537 to 38. The arrival of reinforcements permitted Belisarius to take the offensive and he secured Liguria, Milan, and Rimini. But disagreements between Roman commanders, especially those involving Narses, who did not recognize Belisarius' seniority, led to disaster when an invading army of Burgundians sacked Milan. Allegedly 300,000 of its male inhabitants were massacred. Narses was recalled to Constantinople, and in 539, Belisarius drove the Goths out of all Italy south of the Po Valley and began to close on Ravenna, whose surrender was negotiated in 540. So far, the reconquest had been a spectacular success since with limited forces, the Eastern Romans had eliminated two powerful Western kingdoms, in spite of the distraction of regular incursions into the Balkans by Bulgars and Slavs, and of problems with mutinies and raiding Moors in Africa. The key was peace in the East, but in 539, this was breaking down at the time. Kusro, perhaps already jealous of Justinian's western victories, received an embassy from Vitigis, urging him to act before Justinian became too powerful. A quarrel over grazing rights between allied Arabs gave Kusro an excuse to attack, and in 540 he marched up the Euphrates to seek booty or protection money. Cities on his route were stormed or intimidated into buying protection, and Antioch was captured after a fierce siege. It was systematically ransacked to the extent that marbles and mosaics were transported to Persia. While the surviving inhabitants were marched off, to found a city of New Antioch near Stisiphon. During his return to Persia, more cities were pillaged or coerced into buying safety. Khusro's successes are often cited as proof that Justinian neglected military matters, but the truth is that although Roman defenses were in a reasonable state, Scattered garrisons had no chance of opposing a Persian royal army. There was little to be done except to hold out in defended cities until mobile units were sent from Constantinople. In 541, Khusro switched his attention to Lazica in the north, 
while Belisarius, who had been recalled from Italy to handle the situation, raided into Upper Mesopotamia. In 542, Kusro intended to move on Palestine, but was dissuaded by improvements in Belisarius's army. Another factor may have been bubonic plague, which was raging in the Roman Empire. In 543, plague halted Roman moves in the north. But in 544, Kusro returned to Mesopotamia with the specific target of Edessa. Religion appears to have been the main cause because Edessa was believed to have received a guarantee of protection from Christ in the form of a letter which was engraved over the city gates. Kusro therefore deployed all the resources of Persian siege technology only to be thwarted, and the story emerged that his great siege mound had been destroyed through the intervention of a miraculous icon of Christ, the start of the fame of the Mandilion of Edessa, the future Shroud of Turin. In 545, Kusro agreed a truce for five years, in return for 5,000 pounds of gold and the provision that operations could continue in Lazica. The truce was extended in 551 and again in 557 before a peace agreement for 50 years was signed in 561-2. The treaty contained very detailed provisions about frontier relations, as well as a guarantee from Kusro that he would not persecute his Christian subjects. In Italy, the Roman position soon deteriorated. The Goths believed that Belisarius had tricked them into surrender by appearing to agree to become their ruler and so, although they had lost Ravenna, they chose a new leader. Totilla proved to be a dynamic commander. Roman forces initially outnumbered him, but these were dispersed, and their individual commanders failed to coordinate their actions. As a result, Totilla recovered much of southern Italy in 542 and starved Naples into submission in 543. Belisarius returned in 544 to confront the crisis with 4,000 new recruits but little money. But he was unable to engage the Goths. Totilla captured Rome in 546, and though Belisarius recaptured it the next year, his lack of resources led him to request a recall. When Totila regained Rome in 550 and threatened Sicily, Justinian was eventually prompted to act. Narses was sent to end the war having demanded the resources which he deemed necessary. In 552 and 553, he twice defeated the Goths. He then had to deal with a horde of Franks and Alemanni who had taken the opportunity to invade Italy. But in 554, peninsular Italy was firmly under Roman control and at peace. Narses was left in charge of the reorganization of the country with combined civilian and military authority. One criticism of Justinian's grand reconquest is that it overstretched East Roman resources so that his successors struggled to cope with the various challenges of the late 6th century 
if hindsight makes this apparent, the contemporary perspective needs to be remembered. Justinian pacified the East to the best of his ability before embarking on his Western ambitions. And even though Khusro broke the peace agreement, the frontier was again stabilized after the losses of 540. Bubonic plague exacerbated Roman problems, but the prosperity of Africa in the late 6th century illustrates that peace could have brought long-term dividends. Thank you for watching. Please like and share this video, hit the subscribe button, and feel free to ask me any question in the comments section below. Due to the sacred nature of these videos, I would prefer to keep them ad-free. Please help me to do that by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below and make a donation to this channel. Every dollar counts. Thank you for your support.